Lesson 12A Part 4 um, and what if our circuit breaker cable combination um, isn't on the table that we've just looked at in uh, Part 3. So this is Part 4. What if the cable slash circuit breaker size is not on the table? Well, let's say we had something like 300 millimeter square orange circular supplying at 415 volts, a 350 amps at three phase motor through an underground conduit and it's 140 meters away and the circuit breaker is 400 amps and it's a type C. So we've got a cross sectional area of uh, 300 millimeter squared cable at 415 volts we have to determine the current required to cause instantaneous op operation of the circuit breaker. So being a type T, sorry, type C, we have to go uh, seven and a half times. I'll just underline that. So there's our type C and we know we've got 400 amps, we've rounded it up to 400 amps, it was 350 but we've rounded it up to 400, oh, the sorry the supply, the motor's going to draw 350, the circuit breaker type is 400, so 7 times 400 gives us our, we need to make sure our circuit will pull 3000 amps to trip instantaneously, so that gives us our trip. instantaneous. So determine the fault loop impedance. So if we just look at one leg that's going to be 240 volts because it's remote three phase. So our phase voltage is 240. Divide that by 3000 we're going to get a 0.08 of an ohm. So the total cold fault level impedance, that's what FLZ stands for, fault level impedance, will be our 0.08 multiplied by 0.8, giving us 64 ohms. 0.8 being 80% if you remember. So final sub circuit cold will be our 0.64 multiplied by another 0.8 so we now have a final impedance cold at 0 0.05120 so say our 300 millimeter orange circular supplying 415 volts 350 amps the motor through the underground conduit 140 meters away so we need to measure the actual loop impedance step 7 so again we need to put a link at the load or just leave the load connected it's probably got enough low internal resistance and put an AC supply on and measure the amount of current flowing and the voltage in this particular case whatever the voltage was that they used to do the measuring the AC supply they got 5 amps, so our Z is simply the volts divided by the current. So you'd have to have your own AC supply and work out that the Z is the voltage, whatever the voltage is here of the supply that you use to do the test against the current. So the problem continues. 
but what if we are wanting to install the cable and you want to know if everything is okay? Well, we know the size of the earth is 120 millimeters squared. We get this from a table in AS3000 5.1 and we simply do our impedance triangle. So noting that the XL of the entire cable comes into play above 120 square millimeters. So we've got to have the resistance of the cable. We need to know the XL of the cable, therefore we can then work out the impedance of the cable using Pythagoras' theorem. So we now find the impedance and the actual earth loop FSC. So the XL is 0 0.0723 ohms per kilometre. This just comes from table 30 in AS3008. And if you work that out for 140 metres, it's going to be 0 0.01248 ohms. So we now have the XL. Assuming at uh, 75 degrees, which is the worst case, again from AS3008 table 35, we can calculate that our resistance of the cable is 0 0.08 7136 ohms for 140 metres. So we now have the XL and the Z. So we can now do our Pythagoras and we have our R at 140 and we have our XL at 140. So the XL 0 0.01402 and the R 0 0.021056. Very, very small resistances. So we simply now add our earth A and E's together, our reactances for our earth and our reactances for our active, also the resistances for our earth and our resistances for our active. We've worked those out in the previous slides, so we've got XL and R for the active, XL and R for the earth, and we simply add them together to get the reactive side of the triangle and the resistive side of the triangle, we simply will square them, add them together and take the square root and we end up with an impedance, total Z, of 0 0.0362 ohms. So our last step um, is the Z of 0.6, sorry, 0 0.0362 ohms less than the allowable Z. And the allowable Z was 0.051 and yes it is 0.036 is less than 0.051. So remember that a C-type circuit breaker trips at 7.5 times its rating. This figure is only an approximation. It can be anywhere between 5 and 10 times the rating. Remember too that when we took the FFC as having a 0.8 of the total circuit impedance. This too was an approximation. That was our 80% approximation. So we can work it out by using some of the tables in AS3008 and doing a little bit of measuring and work out what the impedance is for larger cables. So that ends the lesson for uh, lesson 12 part four.